3D The Abominable Snowman by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to be doing The Abominable Snowman from Rudolph. I've also done Rudolph and Hermie on nails before, and so click the description box below to see those links to those videos. I hope you like this, and don't forget to click subscribe to see my future videos as well. So to begin with, I'm going to start with a silver overlay, and in case you are wondering, this is the exact same footage as the other nails, so if you have seen them and you just want to skip over this part, there will be a link somewhere on this video just to skip to where I actually start the 3D. If you haven't seen those, I'm just going to explain it like I have before, so keep listening. And to make the silver overlay, I just took a small bead because I'm a small, relatively um, wet pliable bead because I want to keep this as thin as I possibly can and as you can see I even had a little extra but like I said I want to keep this extremely thin because you do not want to file through your silver because that's going to get rid of the metallic quality and then I'm going to take some clear acrylic and I'm going to be overlaying that silver because you do usually need to file your acrylic if you don't if it's perfect right from the get-go you have some kind of amazing superpower However, I always file mine, um, so I do need to add the clear so that I can file it and protect that silver that's underneath. So make sure that you add clear acrylic over, over the top of the entire thing. And just try to get as smooth as you can, but you will probably need to file. And so now I'm going to be filing it, and I'm using an e-file. Generally, I do like to use uh, hand files instead, and I like 180 grit. That's my preference, but file any way you like. I'm sure you have your own filing routine down. When I was doing this, I did a whole bunch of nails that night, so I just wanted to speed up the filing, so I used the hand file instead. And so I'm now going to begin my 3D Abominable Snowman, and I used white acrylic for this. And I'm also using my regular 3D, or not my, I am not using my 3D brush. I'm using my regular sculpting brush, which is a round number eight, if you are curious what size that is. Just because, for the most part, this guy is so big and he covers the majority of the nail, that using that 3D sculpting brush would take me forever to get this base layer done. I will switch to that momentarily, though. So for the beginning, you just want to create a nice rounded shape. It's almost like a reverse French, if you know what that is. Um, so you want to leave just a band around the cuticle area that just kind of up and over, just a nice smooth shape going up and over and down. I don't know why, it kind of reminds me of a thimble, but a thimble is thumb shaped. I don't know where I got that sudden reference in my mind, but I don't know. I feel like I should share that weird little notion. And so now I'm going to be sculpting around his eye area with blue. So I'm going to start. So it's just, it's above his, it's from like his nose to right above his eyebrows is blue. And I'm using the palest blue acrylic I have. And so like I said, it is really pale blue. If you don't have such a pale blue or if you don't have much color of acrylic in general, which could very possibly happen, there's no reason you can't do 3D stuff if you don't have as big of a collection as I do, there's no reason at all. You just have to paint it. So you could do all of this with white acrylic and then just go through later on with some light blue paint and paint it because that would completely fix your problem. So then the other thing you need to do with light blue is create that thin little lip because he's got his mouth open and he's smiling. So you need to add his lower lip, which is also going to show up with that blue color. And in between that, where it would be like a dark red because it's the inside of his mouth, I am going to paint that later. I didn't want to add any thickness to it. If you added it with acrylic instead of with paint, it's going to add some depth. Whereas if you do it with paint, it's going to keep it nice and shallow and thin, which is going to make it look like it's going in, which will help the idea of it being going into his mouth, if that hopefully makes sense. And then I'm just going to touch up the blue a little bit. It seemed like it wasn't quite opaque enough in that one area where I wanted it to be. And then I'm going to take the tip of my brush and just carve out like the little bags under his eye. So I'm just going to take and make a little swoop under where I'm going to put each eye with that acrylic. It's just really easy. I'm going to add a little more acrylic on top of it. And I'm going to redo them because I didn't like them the first time. So I just did them a second time. Same exact thing. I just added another layer of acrylic and recarved those out just because I wasn't quite satisfied. They didn't appear deep enough to me the first time, so I just redid it. So now I added another bead of blue and I'm going to be adding his nose. So I just place that down and blend it up first and then pat it nice and square so it doesn't come past that line that we created with the blue earlier. And I'm just gonna pat it again, make sure it's nice and smooth. He doesn't have a nose like we do. It comes to a peak, but it doesn't have like the same um, folds on the sides. So I just wanna make sure it's nice and blended. And then using a pin, 
I have to open it first. I'm just going to poke his nostrils out. So you want to make sure that you do give him nostrils. So that's a cute little detail that's easy to add and something that definitely adds to the effect and to the realism and makes him just that much more detailed. So I definitely wanted to add his nostrils. And like I said, it's easy to do. Some details where it's like, okay, it's on and on and it takes time or it takes skill or something. That particular thing is so easy and so quick and so instrumental in helping the image of this guy. So just make sure you give him his nostrils. So now taking white acrylic, I'm going to be adding his upper lip and you don't want to completely cover up his nose or his nostrils that you just added. So just, it doesn't have to be super thick, but you do want to add a band around that light blue that we added and just the light blue of his eye area, the lip light blue, you can add some acrylic around it, but that one doesn't, it's not as important as around his head, but I just added some white pretty much everywhere. This time, not smoothing it quite as much as I did before. If it stays a little bit hairy looking, that is a-okay. So as you can see, I did blend it down, but I didn't necessarily pat it really, really nice and glass smooth. It left some texture in there. Just like I said, he is hairy, so he can look a little hairy. And so now I'm just going to be adding the acrylic over the top, over his forehead. And for this, as you're pulling it down around the blue, you can sort of pull it with the tip of your brush, as I'm doing right there, to create that little bit of hair texture there as well. And then the same thing just around the sides, just covering it up, adding another layer of that white, making sure that it's all, all finished off from side to side and all around. And as you can see there, I was adding a little bit more of that hair texture. And then I'll add a little bit to the top of his head. And the hair texture you can add now, as I am doing. I did a little bit now, but I did the majority of it later on. Like I, but, so, okay, let me start this thought over. You do not have to add it right now if you do not want to. You can add it with the paint, which is what I'll be doing now. So I just took some blue paint and I diluted it ever so slightly. And then I'm just going to go through and I'm going to shade in the areas of the blue. So around his hairline, under in those eye folds, on the bottom of his nose, and then inside his lip is where I just added more of like a, a true blue or a sky blue. And then I'll take some really dark red paint and I'm going to be filling in his mouth. And like I said, you could have done this with acrylic, but that would have made his lip and the inside of his mouth the same thickness, which is not going to look nearly as like it's going in as it would if you left that, that little dimensional quality between his inside of his mouth and his lip. So now with seriously diluted black paint, you do not want this to actually be just straight up black. You want it to be diluted. And you can look at me and say, well, why wouldn't you just use gray instead? Diluted black paint looks different than gray paint. It just has a different thing to it. And I prefer using diluted black paint for certain circumstances, this being one of them. So, but do whatever you want. You can use gray too. That would work just fine. And so now I'm going to be adding a little bit more hair texture with some white paint on the top of his head where he does have more of that hair texture. You can almost just dry brush over it and it's going to pick up all the higher planes of that acrylic. And it's going to highlight only those intensifying the 3D elements. Otherwise, you can use a whole bunch of short strokes like I'm doing on his sides and on like his under his chin. And that's going to give it that same quality too. So you just want to use either really, really short strokes or a dry brush depending on how much hair texture was in your acrylic originally. And then with white still, I'm going to be adding his eyes. So I'm just going to paint them right above those nice little sags under his eyes. And if you do get paint that goes in the wrong place like I did, some of that white paint just went awry there. You can take just a very damp, dry, clean, or not, not a damp, dry brush. That doesn't make any sense. I meant to say clean, a damp, clean brush. And you can sort of try to erase with it. As soon as the paint dries, though, that's not going to work as well. So try to do it immediately. And you can just sort of rub it back and forth with the bristles of the brush to get rid of it. And then once you have his eyes in place, I'm going to outline them ever so slightly with some black. So I didn't outline the bottom of his eyes, just like the top and around the edges a little bit. If you over outline them, it makes him look like he's got some intense eyeliner on. But if you just gently outline, then I think it makes him stand out but not look like he's trying out for, I don't know, a drag show. 
And so I also did his nostrils. As you can see, a little bit of that black paint ended up on his upper lip, but I'll fix that later. I'm also going to be adding his pupils. Yeah, right there, you can see I just covered up with white paint. Um, that particular instance, you could have tried to get rid of it with the damp brush, like I said before, but I, it wouldn't work as well. That technique works really well using with white paint. Anything like a black that's so intense, it probably isn't going to give you the best results painting over it probably is just going to be your best bet and then i also added his pupils if you're wondering why i did one pupil and then did other stuff and then came back that other eye wasn't quite dry and so the pupil wasn't painting and so i decided i'd go do other stuff and then come back to it so now using white paint i'm going to be adding his teeth and so i did first his longer teeth his pointer teeth and then i just added the other ones around them so canines first and then all of those other smaller teeth all around. And same thing for his lower teeth. And when you do this, you want to make sure that you do not have diluted white paint. You want to be full strength, but you only want a tiny bit of paint on your brush. And so now I'm going to be applying a layer of a gel sealer over that silver background. And if there is any hair detail that you painted sticking up onto the background, you can cover that with a gel sealer too. You just want to make sure that it has something on it to protect it from washing your hands and taking a shower. And then put matte top coat over the top of your 3D art. And that is it. Like I mentioned, make sure that you check out the rest of the videos in this little series. I have Rudolph and Hermie that I uploaded the past two days and there are links in there right now. So if you didn't see those or if you missed them, check those out and I will see you in my next video. Bye!